Have you experienced the awesome power of the Panasonic Real 3DO system? Obviously. Presenting 3DO, the most advanced home gaming system in the universe. It's time to put away your toys. 3DO from Panasonic, Gold Star, and Creative Labs. A new low price and free games. Showing graphics of Panasonic Real 3DO. 3DO. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the 3DO Experience, the 3DO Retrospective Podcast, where we talk about all things 3DO, the 3DO company, the console, and everything in between. I am Bill, and this is Threk. How are you doing, Threk? Oh, I'm doing great, man. How are you? Uh, I'm I'm doing fine. It's been a it's a short week for um for us. I it's interesting. Like the company I work for actually gives us a Good Friday off, which I've realized not a lot of people actually get off. In hindsight, well, there you go. Praise God. But um, because it's a short week, it's going by like twice as uh long as a normal week would go. Yeah, it's because you're thinking about it. Yeah. But um, other than that, not bad. Got massive traffic uh, jam after leaving work today. Like, took me like thirty minutes to get home. Usually takes like ten. Well, at least you're not in Baltimore. Y- yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, that's fucking damn. That whole thing's rough. That I watched the video. That bridge legit just went down, destroyed. <laughs> yeah, just gone completely. And, and of course, the internet being the internet, people are throwing all their conspiracies out there. Like people being like, how do they know there's this many people missing or whatever? And it's like, they probably asked the construction company how many people they assigned that job. Like, like people keep track of this shit, y'all. Like, and they're like, why are there so many like cameras? And it's like, well, people like putting cameras on bridges. Like, I wonder how many cameras are on the Golden Gate Bridge right now. There, People would be amazed that there are fanatics for just about everything. Yeah. And and like the like cities like to put up live streams of like like Times Square or you know like major metropolitan areas. It's not that crazy. It's not. But we we won't get deep into that because that's a whole can of worms. And it's just going to make me upset. But today is 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 a big day. It's an exciting day for me. I don't know if it is for you because we finally get to talk about the the lizard freak himself. Good old Gex. How much did that long box cost you? Um, <laughs> so they were selling it for a hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. I got it as a bundle because I bought it with my 3DO. So when I bought it, um, the the store I bought it from is like the old retro store from my hometown. I got the 3DO FC One, Shockwave, Mist, Road Rash, and Gex all together for two hundred dollars, like as like a bundle. That's so, a great deal. It really yeah. is. Well, it was kind of like I, I knew the owner. I was uh, well, I still know him, but um uh we were good good friends and we were chatting about it. And he basically told me he's like this thing's been sitting here for like a year now and nobody wants it. If you'll take it off my hands, I'll give you this deal and I was like here. sold. Sold. I'm going to start a podcast with it. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. Um <laughs> if only he knew. Well, he does. He's aware. <laughs> okay, good, good. But um, is the long is the back of that Gex long box messed up, or is that just the lighting? Uh, so the top is a little crushed in. Uh, the uh, back was, is... uh, oh, okay, okay. Because from so, the angle, it looked like it was like ripped or something. I actually wanted to bring that up because I do have the uh, the PlayStation version as well here. Ah, and yes. One of the things I love about the uh, the Gex long box is. The entire gimmick is that like Gex ripped the box open and that's why like the disc is chilling there. Yeah. But um with the PS1 release, because obviously a PS1 jewel case doesn't look anything like this. Yeah. Uh, they edited it and it just looks stupid on PS1. <laughs> looks like he's like like sitting next to a mini disc. Yeah. Like it this doesn't work nearly. Yeah, because well. the 3DO jewel box, they like just crop it. Basically. Yeah. Pretty rough. Pretty roughly, I may add. One thing that I find really interesting, though, is um, on the back of the K, uh, the long box, there's this whole like, uh, like blurb that that's written as if Gex wrote it, and it, it's actually really entertaining. Like it's 
Does he kiss his mother with that mouth? The digitized voice of Dana Gold, headliner of his own HBO comedy special, stars as Gex with rapid fire wisecracks and one liners. Gex, Gex's mouth gets him in trouble, but it's his thrashing tail that gets him out. Gex gets stuck in the media dimension, the place where cheesy 70s television shows and movies go to retire. To escape, he's got to kill a television in each world. Remember that bumper sticker? What? That's literally what it says at the end. I believe you. I believe you. I, and to further that, the uh, the manual has like a whole short story called A Bad TV Day, where it goes one, two, three, four. It goes six pages detailing Gex's entire history, like his family history, why he's living where he is, his television addiction, like the death of his father. Yeah. Like, like, like uh, the quote here is that that all changed, though, the day his mother got a call from NASA telling her the tragic news. The rocket containing dad and 10 other volunteers chosen to see if they would eat tapioca pudding in zero gravity had exploded on the launch pad due to a Band-Aid floating in one of the fuel tanks. The family's carefree upper middle class life was shattered. And that's that like like are are they are they referencing Challenger with that? Would they um, dare? Would they dare? They are uh, considering how <laughs> unaware, like overly aware this game tries to be, it wouldn't surprise me. I yeah, it, it's very it's it's borderline tasteless. Uh, yeah, th there's a, a level later in the game that is very um questionable. Um I may know the one you're talking about. We'll get there. Uh, yeah, we'll look okay. it's um depends on your how you view it, but um <sighs> this this game is uh to call it a period piece would be um an accurate. <laughs> yeah. It's it, it's the all that of the 3DO. Cuz if you ever <laughs> if you've ever gone back and watched like the original all that, it is very of its time. I just got Very. all that ruined for me recently because me and Alex <laughs> decided to watch um, Quiet Quiet on the Set. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's so weird when when that happened. I I was like, I thought we all knew. We did see the Dan Snyder stuff. That didn't affect me. I was like, yeah, I knew that. And then I found out fucking Pickle Boy was a fucking raging pedophile, and I was like, fuck. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that part. Mm. Yeah, I was oh, like. Boy. Yeah, um, we may be talking about that on GNC within a few weeks. So more on that later. Um, yeah, you guys have fun with that. I yeah. I don't want I don't want to talk about it. Anyways, no, I don't blame you. <laughs> well, I haven't even seen quite on the set, so I can't say. But in any case, uh, yeah, Gex. Finally, what we knocked out plumbers don't wear ties. One of the big ones. So I think it felt natural to knock out another one of the big ones. One that I had been dying to play for a good while. Um, the system's quote unquote killer app, as they say. One of the killer apps, I would say. I'd say it's one of them. And people would say, like, oh, this this is like the 3DO's mascot. And I would argue there's a different game that feels more like the 3DO's mascot than this. Maybe it's because Gex kind of moved past the 3DO, you know, and yeah. kind of became a, a small little series on its own on like the PlayStation and the Saturn and the Nintendo 64. And just learning today, there were Game Boy Color versions of two and three. Yep. They're uh, they're, they're actually maybe worth talking about in the future. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Oh, yeah. I, I imagine we will come back to the Gex games because there's there there's a lot to talk about. I mean, there's quite a bit to talk about with this guy mm. already, you know. So this this Geico car insurance salesman looking ass. Yeah. Um, uh, so if you notice closely on the box, very, uh, we mentioned it previously, but uh, those guys right there. Crystal Dynamics for our audio listeners. This is their, it's not their first game, but it's their first major game. It's the game that kind of broke them through the, um, like, I guess the, the low ceiling that was there for developers, I guess. 
Yeah, the, Gex is an interesting one. Like, I was actually looking into some of the people behind it. Um, it one name in particular stuck out um, right away. Uh, programmers for this game. There was Greg Tavers, and then the one that I noticed immediately, Evan Wells, who nowadays may be better known as the uh, co-president of Naughty Dog. So. Well, I know him for working on Toe Jam and Earl Panic and Funko Tron. That as well. He's uh, He's been around, and... He's made some pretty good stuff back in his day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, he, as you said, he was there for all most of the major Naughty Dog stuff, so it would make sense. Um, also, I found this interesting. It doesn't surprise me, but um, it should be noted that um, the writers for this game were Robert Cohen and uh, Gex's voice, uh, Dana Gold, was a writer on this game. Yeah, it, pretty expectedly, honestly. It it makes sense for its, you know, very of its time kind of humor as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to call this game dated is um, underselling it. Dated yeah. in terms of writing, I should say. For sure. For sure. For sure. It's basically, I guess, the, the plot of the game is that Gex is watching TV Right, right after his uh, round of nude funker says. Yes, yes, he is he is a couch potato. Like even in the the little short story in here, it talks about how the death of his father caused him to just start like watching the TV because it was like a way to get away from all of that, you know, that grief, I guess, to the point where his mom kicked him out because he was watching too much TV and then became like some weird like homeless guy on the streets or something and then his mom finds him in a limo and she's like, Hey, uh, like our, our uncle died or whatever. And he had like $98 billion and we, and we just inherited that. So they reunited and then Gex took his share and is now living in this like slump shitty apartment where he just watches TV all day. And, uh, somebody by the name of Rez, who I guess lives in the TV, like he's the T he's TV's villain or something. I'm not quite sure, but he gets Captain End like straight into the TV or even Comic Zoned into the TV. And now he must fight his way back out. And the only way he, he gets, can get back out is by defeating Rez. He gets uh, Cheetah Men pulled in directly by the balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this game is kind of pulling you by the balls in that regard. I'm surprised Gex doesn't say anything like that here. Um. Yeah, the opening cinematic. So, unlike Gex two and three, this game has like two CGI cutscenes: one at the beginning, one at the end. Um, they look fairly still pretty good for ninety CGI. I'm not gonna lie. Reminds me of D, but this has more character than D. It looks better than D. I'll say that. Like it's still yeah. Um, I will say like the so I played both the PlayStation and. Uh, radio version for this uh episode the cgi definitely looks better on the playstation version they probably just used a higher quality uh video file most likely i played the 3do version and then a long time ago i emulated the saturn version as well so but it's been so long since i've played that i can't really comment but my guess is the saturn version is comparable to the original playstation version that would be my guess from what I remember, um, from what I've seen, I've, I've watched a few video comparisons. From what it looks like, all the versions are pretty much identical. Uh, the resolution may be a little higher on the PS1 PC versions. Um, other than that, though, gameplay-wise, they're pretty similar. Yeah, I, I did have some issue with the 3DO version, but we'll, we'll get to that maybe in a little bit. Um, but yeah, but yeah, where, where did you first hear about Gex? Um, so I first heard about Gex back in the day as a kid. Um, I had a friend who had Gex 64, um, which is Gex 2 on everything else, um, for the, um, for Zen 64 and he would play that a lot. Um, and I remember watching and being like, oh, it's a gecko that runs around and, the 60 N64 version of Gex 2 is not the best way to play that game by a long I, shot. I, I've heard that. Uh, he's missing most of his dialogue and uh, it doesn't run nearly as well. But 
that's how I discovered Gex, and I ended up renting the PS1 version of Gex Under the Gecko, and I ended up liking it, but I had never... So because it was called Gex Entered the Gecko, I didn't realize there it was a sequel to anything. So I kind of played that one and then forgot about it after for years. It's weird it's not called Gex 2, but maybe because it was kind of breaking from the 3DO and becoming its own thing, maybe they just didn't want to put Gex 2 on it to make people go back and play the first one. Maybe. It, it, it's an old trick that people have with with games or other media it's like oh if we you know if we're doing like a reboot i don't know if enter the gecko is really a reboot but if they're getting to a point where it's like hey let's not put a number on this because people will most likely jump into this one thinking it's the first one you know yeah like i learned about gex weirdly enough through that same avgn video where he talks about plumbers don't wear ties i believe um because he does a little thing about the 3DO at the start, and he mentions, he's like, there are some good games on the 3DO, and one of them he shows is gameplay of Gex. And I was like, oh, that looks kind of neat. And then just over the years, I was able to eventually find it, and I played a bit of it, and and I was like, huh, not bad. You know, kind of interesting. And then it became a bit of a meme through, um, I don't know if Scott the Waz started the Gex meme. Um, he started the Gex meme anyways the whole like okay. it's gex night yeah he he probably caused a resurgence in the, in the meme of gex because gex is kind of a memeable character like in in ways similar to sonic but because he doesn't have the same popularity as sonic it just doesn't hit the same way you know like if you're making jokes about gex you you're in the know see gex maybe not sonic so much i think gex is more memeable in comparison to like bubsy only difference is Gex's games are actually good. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was saying somebody to somebody in a Discord a while ago that Bubsy to me is what I assume people who don't like Sonic think Sonic is. Yeah. Because Bubsy Bubsy controls like shit. And those games aren't really any fun at all. I don't see the appeal. The best and, <laughs> and when I and when I play Bubsy, when I'm playing it, I'm like Oh, this is probably what like people who claim Sonic was never good think Sonic is. Yeah. You know, when like, I when it's like, but if you compare Bubsy to Sonic, Sonic is so much better. Oh yeah. In like every facet. I just I don't get it. The best Bubsy game to me is Pause on Fire, and that's just because it's 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 literally just Bit Trip Runner. That's it. Is that the second Bubsy game? That's the second new one. They did another new one? Yeah, they did. The, holy shit yeah they did two new ones the The first one was a very average platformer that played fine but was boring uh, the second one was legitimately just bit trip runner yes uh, the original one is claws is bubsy and claws encounters of the third kind which is such a terrible name yeah then, there's and then bubsy there was two. two bubsy fractured furry tales no the thinking, jaguar wait, game isn't that just bubsy too well, no there's own- bu- it's there's its own t- thing. Yeah, there's two, and then the Jaguar had the the Furry Tales one. And then Bubsy 3D, or Bubsy is 3D in Furbitten, Furbitten Planet. Planet. And, then, and then, yeah, there was the Woolies Strike Back, which when I heard Bubsy was coming back, I'm like, these people have no shame, man. No shame. Um, and then learning that, like, Accolade kind of existed, or I think it was, like, UFO Bot Accolade. I don't, I don't know. It was accolade in all in name only. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then obviously, Wooly Strikes Back didn't do good at all. So who ca- who gave a shit? But I guess yeah, as you said, they did Bit Trip Runner and Pause on Fire, which I did not know this was a thing. Yeah, I bought it just out of curiosity, and I played. It. I'm like, this is just Bit Trip Runner. I'm like, hey, so it's good, <laughs> but it's Bubsy. Just play Bit Trip Runner. That, why, exactly. why play this? Exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's no there's no Bubsy on 3DO, which is a shame. I feel like it'd be a perfect fit. Yeah, I know. It would give the 3DO another platformer. Yeah, so, like, like, so, so I could sit here shit-talking Bubsy for an hour, but everybody does that anyway. Yeah. Um, but Gex, on the other hand, is not a bad game. Um, no, no. You know dare, I, dare, dare I say, I really liked it. Hmm. Um, it it's really funny, like... So Gex has been through like multiple periods. Like there was this early time where like he was um 
people knew about him and they kind of liked his games overall and he was generally well received then he went through that period in like the 2000s where everyone just kind of like shat on him um like i remember game informer had an art it was like one of those like one of their little side articles and it was like all these different mascots throughout the years and you could do like this like choose your own like uh one of those like weird like graphs that you kind of pick the pathway of and you see where you end up and i always remember because like you'd end up like one of them was like do you play as a like reptile kind of character and it was like spyro and then gex and then it was like are your games good it's like it said spyro the first three were and then gex it was just kind of like an uh yeah um, it, i think it was that era where in the 2000s it felt like um like game informer and all these other publications are trying to shit on a lot of the past of video games like if you hadn't had that sort of success like say like a mario or even like a spyro the dragon or something like that like it felt like people were just like oh that's like old bullshit who cares right it's yeah. not the new the new thing right it, it was sort of that era where it was like before retro gaming was like cool you know, like playing old games was kind of like its own weird taboo where it's like, just play the new stuff. Are you playing all the old stuff? Hmm. And then I think it was in the 2010s where I think that cup was around the time of NES nostalgia becoming a big deal and like retro gaming becoming cool again. And, and then you had developers starting to make games that were more in that style. Couple that with also like Xbox Live Arcade being a big thing and there was a lot of old like older 2d style games released on there on WiiWare as well so it, it was it was just like that weird time where people were kind of shitting on 2d games in general i think yeah or like 2d 2d games are kind of relegated to like game boy advance kind of whatever stuff you know what i mean when even and, and even looking back at like those games on gba and even ds like those games are fantastic as well um i i think just as a I guess the gaming industry as a whole has gotten better with like appreciating 2d games for what they are. I think, I think we've gotten into a better spot. Yeah. Honestly, now they kind of stand on their own next to 3d games and they're like both kind of their own separate things. Yeah. The only time it becomes a talking point is if say like a Metroid dread comes out that's 60 bucks and then people are like, Oh, should a 2d game be $60? And it's like, I mean, if you don't want to pay 60 for it, well, it's Nintendo. Fuck, fuck you, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> you get it used for like forty later. Well, no, it's Nintendo. That thing's gonna be sixty forever. <laughs> no, you buy a used copy for like forty bucks or something. Yeah. True. So, yeah, it's just, it, it's it, there. Are, there's a certain group of 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 gamers who find two D games weird. They just they just don't like them. You know, yeah. it, it it's the same kind of people who like won't watch black and white movies because they're in black and white, which those people make my skin crawl like mm. the disgusting creatures. You're missing out on some good cinema. Mm. So Gex going into Gex one itself. So Gex one is actually to me like a very interesting platformer in a lot of ways um, because Gex is a gecko. His gimmick is he can stick to walls and ceilings and in a, in a 2d platform that kind of changes like the idea of like how levels progress in like a lot of ways gex finds a way of mixing these sort of traditional 2d platforming elements that were established with mario and later with sonic like those two are like in this era those are the two big platformers right and then you have like all the b tiers your bubsies your gexes your era, the acrobats, your zools, you know, all, all cool spot. I could keep going like a bunch of those. Right. And, and, and Gex finds a way of mixing, say like, there's definitely a Mario influence. Oh yeah. There's definitely a Sonic influence, but it also is able to, to bring in, as you said, fresh elements with the, like the wall climbing um, and not just the wall climbing of like your standard, like, you know, oh, I can go on the wall and go in the ceiling. You can also climb on some of the walls in the background. Yes. As well. And as the game progresses, the level design becomes more and more built around that. So there are certain like sections of levels or even like whole levels where you're basically just attached to the wall the whole time. Mm -hmm. And you sort of have to fig figure your way around the level in sort of a, a slightly different way than just your standard just running to the right, which is really cool. Um, and the levels have 
kind of a mazy design, but they're not that bad. You know, they're, they're, yeah. they're, they, they, I guess maybe they operate kind of in like a sonic way where there's like different layers, but they all kind of tunnel toward the same exit anyways. They're mostly linear, but they have kind of some alternate paths that you can yes. take throughout. Yeah, it's like a Sonic 2 kind of thing, I think. Um, especially when the game is like, oh, in each level you have to find this specific item, which I believe is a remote control to access like yes. another level. Um, yes. At, when, when you first see that, or at least for me, I thought, oh, is this going to be a platformer where it's going to be like super hidden and I have to like go around every little corner to find it? I was, I was glad that I was wrong and that the game, the levels kind of tunnel you into finding that remote control pretty quickly so that you can you know get back get back out of the exit and move on to the next level like none of the levels are crazy long no not at all there is a lot of levels though which makes up for it not as many as say like you know like say like a mario game you know mario games are usually packed with levels um but yeah thankfully this one yeah it, it, it has i think just the right amount like not too much not too little you know, it, you, you can tell that, like, this really is showing off Crystal Dynamics' talent as a developer. Because I think the games before this they did were, they they done Crash and Burn. Crash and they Burn, did, they did Solar the, the, Eclipse. Yeah, Solar Eclipse. They did the port of um, Samurai Showdown. Samurai they Showdown. did off, did they do Off-World, off-world Interceptor? Yep. yep, Off-World Interceptor. That was yeah, the, all I... Uh, Gex was their fourth game. Ironically, Gex was the game that showcased their 2D capabilities. Yeah, like, well, because everything else they were doing was like vehicle based games, you know, vehicle and, flight or, yeah, vehicle or flight games. Yeah, basically. And they're, you know, kind of a mixed bag, I would say. Um, so with Gex, it's like a completely different genre, but it feels like to me, the devs had a lot of experience in playing, like, say, Mario World and like Sonic's mm. like one through three and probably some of the other platformers at the time. I mean, they were everywhere back then. Oh, yeah. And and you get the sense that Crystal kind of studied all of those games and were like, how do we like make one that kind of fits in, you know, sticks out in its own way, but at the end of the day is still a really good game. You know, it yeah. fits in perfectly with the times, which is I think what makes it is what makes it memeable with all like the jokes and everything. But I was surprised that sitting down and playing the game properly and beating the whole thing, there is a secret world I could not get to unfortunately, um, which is a bit more of a Mario World influence, having that kind of secret world. Um, despite that, I was surprised that the game is like pretty good, like pretty mm-hmm. damn good for what it is. It is a very solid platformer. Like, to me, like what makes this game such a well-designed game is most, most platformers you play, they're going to have frustrating sections. That's just kind of how platformers are but there was never a point in this game where i was like that's bullshit and I, I just like raged out like i found most things to be generally achievable yeah there was fr- frustrations going to happen with any game just sometimes things just don't jive with your style but the the only levels that i found kind of on the frustrating side was well all, all the various worlds i guess we can say there's the you start out in a cemetery kind of area and then you go into like new cartoon land. Yeah. And then you go into like a jungle kind of area. And then you do like a, I think they call it Kung Fuville or something. Yeah. The, uh, the questionable one. A little, a little insensitive with like sumo, like sumo wrestlers that you can bounce on their tummies. There's like Raiden everywhere, like yeah. electric eels. It, it's very, and, and the music is kind of. No, oh, the mu- the music is thing. probably the most. Uh, yeah, the Asian riff. You you know the Asian riff. Um, I I will say Gex's quotes weren't as bad as I was expecting. At that he doesn't point. shut the fuck up though. No, no, we'll get to Gex's talking <laughs> later. But I will say for that part, he didn't say anything where I was like, "Oh no!" Like it was I, mostly the background itself that was kind of like, "Oh no, this is the two nineties, all right." <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll give Gex credit in that he doesn't say anything that's like offensive or kind of off color he's just like making essentially like like 90s stand-up kind of like referential humor you know like like when you fight the final boss he goes oh it's darth vader's younger brother myron it's like what (laughs) yeah like Like, is there a joke there like 
or or he's like, this guy's nuts. Have you been have you been on Geraldo yet? Which that's a dated ass reference. I know that reference. Like, you know, Geraldo, know of, piece of shit. But one of his ending <laughs> quotes is like, Obi-Wan says the, this one is strong or something. And it's like, OK, <laughs> all of this for Rosebud. Um, I believe I'll, I believe the best review I've ever seen for this game was like, well, referring to the uh, the comedy in it, it was like this game was dated when it came out. For real, for real, it, it's just a very specific kind of referential, like pre Family Guy referential type of humor, you know. And 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 it's a shame that like I'm such a fucking nerd that I know some of these outdated yeah. references that I shouldn't. And also every once in a while I would giggle, but it was, it, it's more of like a lot of things when I laugh at them, I just laugh at how bad it is, you know, I and mean, that's my, the, and, and that's one of the the parts about Gex I didn't care for is that he just doesn't know when to shut up, you know, that's uh, like, like that feels like a Sonic thing because Sonic was known for having like, Oh, he's like a cool dude. He's got attitude, blah, 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 blah. And Gex is like, Oh, we'll take that one step further than sonic because sonic knows when to be serious you know like they yeah. know when to play it up and be silly but then they know when to like say when he's fighting robotnik he takes it seriously whereas gex doesn't take a damn thing of no. this seriously um, and it's like dude if you fuck this up you're stuck here forever yeah um i'll, I'll save it for when we talk about the ending because i love his quote at the end of the game but um <laughs> that's um, a good quote literally literally um like Throughout the game, Gex just fucking doesn't give a shit, and I kind of like it at the, in in a sense too, because I I kind of enjoy the fact that he's a he's a protagonist of a game that doesn't care about anything going on right now. For like modern gaming standards, it's kind of refreshing hmm. to not have these crazy emotional weights tied to everything. You know, it it's nice, um, and and very silly, you know. But like, but this but the silliness can wear on you. Well, it's more the. Rep- once he starts repeating quotes and then you kind of get, oh yeah uh, yeah because i imagine there's only so many they could fit say on the disc or so many that they could just think up you know yeah especially in a 2d game in the 3d games he has a bit more ver- more variety overall um like i will say like some of my favorites are like in the uh, the graveyard so the way every level like world is set up is like you have this kind of hub with a bunch of um different levels and you have to get remotes to unlock more levels but um when he's in these little hub worlds he'll say like these random quotes like my one of my favorites is in the in the graveyard he'll be like hey scoop let's find the mystery van (laughs) gee scoop let's get back to the mystery van like he's doing a shaggy impression yeah like a bad shaggy impression yeah Um, it it yeah it's so fucking weird man and then a later one in like the more prehistoric ish kind of overworld he goes like wilma (laughs) (laughs) oh he did i'm like what the hell is wrong with you man it's like i think dana gold was just doing his stand-up half the time i guess i've never seen dana gold stand up so i cannot say if he's any good or not, I doubt any of his fans will attack us, but you know, the most I know about Dana gold was a Gex and that he was a writer on the Simpsons for a while, not during the good era. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, that's great. Um, no, I was gonna, uh, Oh, that's right. This, this is, this is one of two games I know for the three DO that are focused around a stand up comedian. Yes, because there's another. It's not really a game, though. It's just a thing. I don't know if we'll ever cover it on the show, so I guess I'll mention it here. Uh, have you heard of Dennis Miller's? That's news to me. I know of it. I've never played it though. So it, it's not really a game per se. Like I think Dennis Miller was on SNL, and he was doing Weekend Update at the time, and I believe it's just a collection of some of his like weekend update stuff like just on a 3do disc and it's all just kind of centered around him and and i i played it i think on emulator and i was just like what like what what is why why is this what it is you know what i mean i i don't know like i guess i guess dennis miller is known for like being like a political commentator comedian kind of guy he's like he's like john stewart but not as good yeah so that that's my that's my guess but i i i don't know i'm not trying to shit on dennis miller but it's just 
it was so weird that was a thing that happened. Yeah. <laughs> so the 3DO had a lot of games like that. Well, it, I wouldn't even call them games, though. Like, well, they're just, like, software. Yeah. What's funny to me is, um, I was just noticed this, too, um, looking at the uh, the box. This is a rare 3DO game that actually has an ESRB rating. Oh, interesting. Yeah, K to A. That, that's about right for that game. What's funny, though, is PS1 version is E. Oh, yeah, because they switched to E, I think, in, like, 96. Yeah, they dropped, like that. they dropped K to A because it was too broad. Yeah, well, and, and K to A is too much. Yeah, it, it's too, it's too much to think about, like kids to adults. Where it's just like E, it's like oh, it's for everyone. Yeah, easier to think about. And then they had, well, yeah, I think it was E. It was K A T M. They swapped um, K A to E T M. They I think added E C in like the mid two thousands. I think around the same time they added the E ten plus rating for E C. I think was actually around earlier because there was edutainment games on like PS one in the nineties that had that. Rating. Okay. Okay, yeah, that that would make a lot of sense. They've actually dropped it. They don't use it anymore at all. Really? I I, I thought there were still games that get EC, but it's just very rarely. No, nah, they dropped it entirely because they basically pointed out that most of those games are qualify as E for everyone anyways, so they just figured there's yeah. no point. Like, you don't have to rate a Sesame Street game EC. Like, we yeah. know what a Sesame Street game is. See, the one EC game I own that I can think of off the top of my head is like Rayman brain games on PS one. Interesting. Interesting. And then I, did they have AO at the start? They've had AO since the start. Uh, the reason why AO is kind of weird is that it's Sony, Sega and Nintendo. And then later Microsoft uh, basically made a pact that they would never allow an AO game on their systems. And I believe all of the major retailers have even yes. said they won't stock AO games. Because the the most infamous AO game, which is hilarious because it's not it's it's kind of a joke if you actually play it nowadays, was a uh, Thrill Kill, which was a 3D fighting game that like the developers went out of their way to get an AO rating because they thought that would boost sales, and then they found out shit, we can't release it on any console because they won't let us. <laughs> Well, and then they toned it down to an M, and then it never got released. Yeah, it got canceled, and its engine was later used in that Wu-Tang Clan Shaolin Fighters game. Yeah, with that terrible Wu-Tang Clan um, controller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that, I love that thing. Yeah. So I, lo I love, hey, I love Wu. I love the, I love the Wu-Tang, but it's a weird thing. I, I think they're making a, a new Wu-Tang game, like, a, like an action RPG thing. I haven't heard about it in a while. I should check in on it. You can find the ROM for Thrill Kill online. It yeah, is you can play it if you want. It's fine. <laughs> it is laughable that that got an AO rating. It, different times, I think. Yeah. Different times. Um, I was going to say, technically the most notorious AO game is uh, GTA San Andreas. Yes, only the PC version. Uh, well, because... well, when they found, well, when everybody found out about the hot coffee mod, they re-rated they re it. AO and so they had to pull it from all the shelves and so because of that um, Rockstar made a second edition yeah. of San Andreas where they completely removed it so you may see copies if, if you're out in the retro store right and you and you go into like the PS2 section look at the copies of San Andreas some of them may say second edition on it which means yeah. there's no way to access the hot coffee mod it at all which is crazy because even in the original version you could only access it through hacking the game yeah. So it wasn't even like easy to get. It was just people found out about it and because GTA was already on such kind of thin ice with these people anyways, it was it was just it was the catalyst to to try to fuck with it. I I love the hot coffee mod in hindsight just cuz it is the dumbest fucking thing. it's just two fully clothed models humping each it, other. It, it it's the equivalent of having like a Barbie and a GI Joe do this. Yeah. It is so It's stupid. the same thing. That's all it looks like. Uh, oh, Manhunt 2 got an AO for the PC version. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's, that's yeah, the it, only other one I can think yeah. of. Outside of that, it's just porn games. That, that That's basically all yeah. that gets it. So. Like, I bet you, I bet you, like, is Honey Pop 2 AO? Probably is. I'd have to, so you can find a ton of AO games if you go on Steam without safe search on. <laughs> Have fun with I, that one, I, kids. I will say I typed in Honey Pop on ESRB and got nothing. 
they probably don't know what it is. Because <laughs> <laughs> because you can't search by like um, the ratings. Because yeah, you have E E ten T M A O, and then they have rating pending, and then I like this one: rating pending likely mature. <laughs> I like that. I like Likely that. Mature. Yeah, they're like, yeah, we know. We that's like probably at like the GTA Six trailer probably had that on there. Where it's like, yeah, yeah, we know. That's still my favorite. Like, I still my favorite part. One last tangent before we get back to Gex. One of my favorite parts of the ratings though is like the little like uh, descriptions on the back of why it got the rating. Oh yeah, and when there's nothing there, they just say, "Oh, visit our website." Yeah, my favorite one still by far though is um. Metal Gear Solid um, Five Ground Zeroes had um, one of the the tags for why it was M rated was uh, sexual violence, which um, the funniest interaction I ever had with a parent um, at a GameStop was there was a mom that was trying to buy a game for her kid, and she was considering GTA. I mean Metal Gear Solid Five Ground Zeroes, but she was trying to ask the the employee. I don't know parents and kids. I'll never understand, but um. She was asking the employee, like, what is sexual violence in the game? <laughs> and and uh, the the employee had never played it. And I had. So I was sitting there going, like, do I tell her? Do it. Do it. Um, Because she was like, the, but I always laugh because the way she was asking the employee was she was like, she was like, was it like a bitch slap? <laughs> like, that was her, what? her, her idea that, of sexual violence. I think that I don't know about that. Um, But then I had to go up to her and pull her aside and be like, so there's a point in the game where one of the characters has a bomb in her vagina. Oh. And oh, yeah. uh, she immediately went, okay, not this game. And I was just like, <laughs> I was like, I am sorry. And thank you. Thank get, you for your time. <laughs> and I walked yeah, away. Yeah. Get him chicken shoot or something. Yeah. Get him, get him Gex. <laughs> well, Gex isn't available yet. So Yeah. I just, I, I was like, when I saw her like considering Metal Gear Solid 5, I was like, I'm like that is not the franchise yeah. for a kid, especially no, like not just at trying all. to. They won't. It, they'll get bored in the opening cutscene alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> oh, Ground Zeroes. Oh boy. Um, but yeah, yeah. Like, like I remember when I was getting to that certain age where I was like one to play those M games, but my parents were just like, "Yeah, whatever." They just kind of stopped caring. So like whenever I would get one of those games, the the guy would be like, "Well, I have to tell you which mature." And my parents always said, "Oh, he's seen worse." And, and I'm always like, "What the fuck do they think I've seen worse?" Like yeah. probably the other game they bought me. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. But, my parents were more strict about that. I didn't get M rated games till like turn seventeen. Yeah, yeah, but like say like I'm playing say No More Heroes three, right? Like this game earns its mature rating. I can definitely oh, yeah. say that. <laughs> Oh boy! Um, All right. Anyways, back to Gex. I don't know why we did such a thing with the the ESRB rating. That, the ESRB have a blog. Like, who the yeah. fuck reads that? Anyways, um, but yeah. So, what, what else were we saying about Gex? We didn't talk about the power ups, and I find the power ups very interesting throughout the levels. There's one thing I like about them. One thing I found interesting. I don't know if you saw this, but with all the the various power ups, right? You have two options to collect them, or kind of. Like you can use like your your main attack is uh, Gex whipping his tail, right? To to kill enemies and all that it makes perfect sense. And with all the power ups, it doesn't matter the power up. If you hit it, if you hit it with your tail, it just gives you a hit point. Yes. No matter what. But but if you actually want to use the power up, you have to then use Gex's tongue to actually like eat the power up and get it, which could be either say it gives him more hit points. Um, completely fills up his hit points. Um, lets you like shoot fireballs out of your mouth. Um, yeah, where Ingex goes, that's a spicy meatball. Yeah, he says that. Um, there's the uh, like he can run super fast. Mm -hmm. um, he can jump higher. Like there's quite a few power ups, but I found most of them outside of like ones improving your health to be completely useless. They were situational at best. Like the yeah, the, uh, the one that shoots fireballs was kind of useful. But you never got it in a place where it really helped. Yeah, the most useful one was there was a specific, I forget the exact level, but there was a specific situation where there was a bunch of TVs and mm -hmm. it gives you the lightning power up. So you could just shoot lightning. And I was just spamming the the lightning at the TVs and they were just blowing up like crazy and yeah. allowed me to clear through that whole thing without taking a hit. 
That was probably the most use I got out of one of the like attack kind of power ups. But outside of that, getting ones that upgrade you to say, you know, four or five hit points is nice. It's a shame you can't carry it with you yeah. throughout the whole game, but it would probably make the game a little too easy. Because I think the difficulty of this game, it's not really that difficult. No. Um, like there's there's ways early on of just completely of, of getting like 30 plus lives, like pretty easy. You know, finding yeah. spots to farm one ups. But what sucks is if you save the game, turn it off and turn it back on, it resets your live counter back to yep. three. It's got Mario logic. Yeah. Another Mario influence thing, which is, which is annoying, but you know, um, it is what it is. Speaking of saving, I did want to bring this up. The saving sucks. Pain yeah, in the not, ass. Pain in my ass. It's not great, but I will bring it up because one of the reasons why Gex on 3DO is considered the definitive version is because of how it handles saving. In the PS1 version, they got rid of the save uh, built-in save feature and replaced it with a password screen. Why? The PS1 had memory cards. Why? Why would they do yeah. that? I'll never understand. The, does the Saturn one save? I don't know. I've never played the Saturn version. Mm. So I'd have, have to, to. We have to check. We'll have to ask Rick. He has it. Oh yes, yes, Rick. Please let us know if Sega Saturn Gex saves. But yeah, how this game saves, it's very weird. There's two ways to do it. One, I think, isn't completely like guaranteed to save, but the second one is. The first way to save is that you get to save the boss of the level. You beat it, move on to the next level. In the manual, it says the game saves. Mm-hmm. Eh, finicky. I think sometimes. later. <laughs> sometimes, yes. The true way to save is that some levels, like all the levels when you're on like the map, have like a little TV screen and the TV screen is like the level. And some of them have a VCR under the, under the TV. And so that basically tells you, Oh, when you go in here, you can find like a VHS tape. And if you find the VHS tape and are able to beat the level with the VHS tape, it saves and it saves every time. I didn't have any issues with it. In fact, um, if any of you want to play Gex on the 3DO, um, to, to save, the easiest way to save is go to the level called Tomato Soup in the graveyard level or the graveyard area. Um, it's, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty easy level, but at the very end, the VHS tape is right next to the exit. So there's no weird... If you can make it that far, just grab it and leave, and it saves no problem. So that's a little tip for you guys out there. Yeah, it's not the most convenient saving method of all all time but it's no for what it is i mean it works sometimes well one method works <laughs> the other i one will say works. i will say it's better than say mario world because I, I correct me if i'm wrong but in mario world you can't save whenever you want it only saves after a castle after a castle and i think after there was one other instance i think it's saved but i can't remember off the top of yeah head. but beyond that there's no way of actually going in and saving on your own because because at least with gex you can kind of finesse it with that one specific level to where you're like oh i'm done let me just beat this level real quick save and then i can get out of here yeah which is nice and i i don't know if crystal intended that or maybe they were like oh let's just do that as a little nice thing that people will find i don't know if, if that was intentional that was nice of them um, what you th- just out of curiosity, uh, the demo in the background there doesn't show it, but what do you think of the death animation? Oh, uh, where he just like comes at you? Yeah, he falls from the top of the screen. I yeah, like-, like his mouth is like you go in his mouth. Yeah. Uh, f- funnily, uh, I'll tell you what my son told me. He's like, Dad, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a little off-putting the first time you see it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's weird. I didn't care for it, but it is what it is. Especially because it's silent. Like he just falls towards the screen and then that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it's for me, it didn't hit as hard. It's it's probably because Gex isn't taking any of this seriously. So why the hell should I? Yeah. You know, what, you know what I mean? Ah, sorry. That that that's sort of my feeling on it, I guess. Yeah. But it's but it's weird. Yeah. And I, I guess we can go from there. Like the sound and music, like the sound design, the music. I like the yeah. I like the soundtrack. It's it's catchy. It, it's good. It, it's not standout ish, but it's not bad at all. It's it's perfectly fine. I still but love it, that. It, first. It's no it's no Earthworm Jim. That's a no. great soundtrack. 
it's you know out of so for generic platform former music i think it works very well um like the graveyard theme that first level music track that still like uh sticks with me all the time like i love the catchiness like the kind of keyboard sound in the background yeah yeah i totally get that um some of the later levels are pretty good too it's it's serviceable music like none of it is bad in my opinion like there's nothing i hated um but none of it is like like I'm not pursuing this like for like my phone or, or something to listen to at work. Yeah, when you're when basically when you're trying to compare this to say Mario and Sonic's music, n- no, doesn't hold a candle at all. Even like Crash Bandicoot had had better music. Oh yeah, yeah, and Crash was like right after this. Yeah, so this was '95. Crash was like right around the corner. Yeah, and and it's weird how. I wouldn't say they're too similar because Crash is more of like an evolution into the 3D stuff. But like Crash kind of became one of these sort of like up there with Mario and Sonic, I think at that time, just because of he was the de facto um, Sony mascot, for better or for yeah. worse. So. Yeah, honestly. Um, so what what do you think of like graphically? Like I thought, you know, for 32-bit like 2d game mostly pre-rendered sprites um i thought it was pretty good i liked it i i think it, i think the game looks uh pretty solid it's weird how it mixes um hold on a second it, it's weird how it mixes um like 2d and 3d stuff because you have um like gex is i think they're donkey kong country gex so he's like a 3d model that they sort of turn into like a 2d sprite. I yeah. Think. Not nearly as sophisticated as like the silicone graphics, like style that uh, DKC used, but like, it looks fine enough for what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And then everything else is like 2d sprite based, like all the enemies, the backgrounds, all that stuff. And I think it looks pretty good. It, the The game, like when you first, it, it has a little issue, I think with like color, because it feels like a lot of it just has like kind of earthy, like greens and, yeah browns and all that stuff it, there, i mean like cartoon land does a good job with doing like funky colors and even res's lair has some interesting color stuff and the kung fuville but but a lot of the color palette is it, it it's not as bright and colorful as you think it would be so my theory behind that this this is probably just an excuse and like isn't the actual reason but um the main gimmick of all the stages is they're supposed to be based off of seventies, like movie themes and like movies in the seventies kind of had a more drab, like color palette. Yeah. Like a sepia tone kind of thing. Yeah. Like this is probably me just coming out. Yeah. This is probably me reaching a lot, but like, that's kind of my theory on it. No, I could see that. I mean, it doesn't look bad. It just kind of, it looks very much like, it has a look to it that kind of just like it does one thing and it kind of just does that one thing pretty decently. Yeah. But I will say it does stand out from the crowd. Yeah. Well, there's a reason why Gex kind of stuck out at the time. Is it because he doesn't shut the fuck up? Well, even I'd say like even beyond that, because like most people noticed Gex right away just from like screenshots of it, because it it is a striking looking game. Yeah, I I think it's because like if you look at him, you know he's he's a he's a gecko. He's got the sunglasses. He has like the crossed arms, like Sonic or whatever. Um, like he has that sort of like standout cool attitude. And I think being the kind of pigeonholed as like the three DO's de facto mascot, I think did elevate him a little bit as well. Yeah, um, I also find it well. He was also Crystal Dynamics mascot for a long time. Like he was. Legit- yeah. They're in their logo. I love this because he's like double logo there. Yeah, um, which, which I think that makes more sense that he would be the the logo of Crystal Dynamics. It's a shame he's not anymore. It'd be cute if they still had his. Like, imagine like you buy like say like one of the Tomb Raider games and they show Crystal Dynamics logo and there's just a little Gex head right there. That'd be for cute. their for their anniversary. I would love if they brought back this this classic logo. But yeah, that'd be that would be cool if they brought that back. But eh, who knows. I mean, they, um, they they might when they do the the Gex trilogy thing, because they probably have to throw the Crystal Dynamics logo in there. So they might do that one. Yeah. 
Um, I was going to say too, um, we, we kind of glossed over them, but, uh, what, what'd you think of the boss fights in this game? Not bad. Like an interesting they, mixture of ideas in there. Like they all weren't the exact same boss fight. They all had something kind of unique to them. Like you have the first one in the, the graveyard area, which is like the lady, the ghost like lady, kind of yeah. the ghost lady kind of in the background with the skulls around her. Like she was pretty easy. That was the, a cool, cause that kind of like harkened to like, that reminded me of like a Castlevania boss fight where like the background yeah. is kind of like, it's on like this, like kind of like wheel and like, it kind of like flows around you and the screen. Yeah. Yeah. And I one shot at her. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> which is awesome and then the the second boss in the cartoon land is what captain like flatulous or something stupid like yeah he, the... he, he, remind, he reminded me of booger man you know but to be fair but to be fair booger man lives in my head rent free and um that boss fight was a little more difficult for me like i was like i have no idea how to beat this guy and then i a had to like, them... i had to check a walkthrough and how you beat him is you have to climb up to the ceiling and then like drop the anvils on his head which that was cool. Weird. That was cool. I like. It's a unique idea the for the boss. Yeah, you have to think outside the box and you use Gex's abilities mm. in order to defeat him, which I thought was cool. You know, it was a little obtuse, but when you do it, it's like, oh, it makes sense. You know, it, like, it was well, a cool way of doing it. Skipping ahead a little, but the final boss, Rez, I I really liked the fight against Rez. It was okay. I I, I, like, I didn't I didn't like it. It's not my least favorite boss fight, but it wasn't as good i kind of like the idea of um you have to climb up the walls and then you have to platform across the the television screens and then like you're actually over like a bottomless pit and you have to kind of like time out your uh movements yeah it, it was and, just cool. and, and you have to like use your um collecting things with your tongue to get that specific fly that's the only thing that does damage to res it it, it does a good job of using all of gex's abilities in in the fight and everything you've learned up into that point I just don't think it really had that climactic feeling that a final boss fight should have. Just, no. just in my opinion, you know. To be it honest, felt, it the, felt a little generic. To be honest, the way the fight ends perfectly encapsulates just how much Gex doesn't give a shit during this entire yeah. game. Basically, yeah. My favorite boss fight, though, is the one in the jungle area where you have to climb up that that really tall tower with that weird ball snake coming at you i was getting like balls 3d flashbacks at that snake um but it was cool because you don't directly fight the boss you just have to traverse the top of the tower and then uh get the i think it was like a gorilla to knock all of those rocks down to completely obliterate the snake but i like that it was a it was a cool boss fight I, i enjoyed that one and then oh shit what was the the kung fu area one that was like the turtle guy that yeah that turtle that turtle one kind of sucked like he had a very weird pattern and i think he took way too many hits yeah he that was my least favorite <laughs> honestly that's my least favorite level in the game in a lot of ways yeah it, it felt by that point they were like kind of running out of ideas or just maybe this idea wasn't the strongest one they had did you, you notice know? that the uh, remotes in that level were shaped like japanese like archways oh yeah I yeah. was like, wow, they're really going hard into this. Oh, yeah. D- different times, man. Different times. Oh, yeah. But 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 with ideas, like, this game has quite a few of them, actually. Like, it's not a game that's struggling to come up with interesting, way, interesting um, like, levels and um, obstacles for the, for the player to get through. Like, no, the game, like, knows what it wants to do, and it does a, a very competent job of giving you like a, a good 2d platformer experience, especially on a console that doesn't really have that many 2d platformers, you know, like even, um, I think, uh, uh will, a uh, friend of the show, will, who's you, most, mostly in the novel console discord. He even asked me, he's like, you know, why does the 3d not have that many 2d platformers? And my guess was that the people making games for 3d weren't thinking about that, that they're like, Oh, those are probably on like the SNES and Genesis. Like we want to do, something fresh with this new technology but i think gex is just a prime example of like 2d platformers are just really really good in general and the 3do can do them well so why weren't there more of these you know like the only other one we've played on this show up to this point i believe was soccer kid soccer kid yes and soccer kid is a really good concept that wasn't executed very well yeah soccer is a fine game that just doesn't really 
it's fine enough, but it's not like anything you write home about. Exactly. Whereas this, I think the concept of it is kind of eh, like not the strongest, but it's executed very, very well. Yeah. Like get, control wise, Gex like controls like a dream to me. Like he's like, oh, yeah, one of, one of the better programmed. This is a very solid feeling game. Like there was never a point yeah. where I, other than like, obviously, like the 3DO inherently is no we'll discover it more as we go on but the 3do inherently is not the most powerful system on the world in the world no um and gex does struggle a little bit at times to run it's just unfortunately a property of an aspect of the 3do itself yeah that was sort of my biggest issue with gex is the the performance of the game because yeah the controls are great like he doesn't try to copy mario or sonic's like control scheme because if you've ever played a lot of these like lesser known platformer mascot games from this era, a lot of them are just like copying Sonic because yeah. he was like the hot shit at the time, like that kind of style. And it just doesn't really work because a lot of them don't have that programming wizardry to make it work. Um, and even the ones that try to copy Mario, it's like it's easier to do. But again, it's like it just doesn't feel great. Whereas Gex, he feels much more in a way he's like much more modern. Like there's no real momentum to his movements. Like not, he has a run button, but you don't have to like to pick up speed or do any of that kind of more physics-y type of stuff you do with those other games, which in a way I think is, is better because it allows this one to stand out and give you a, a different kind of experience with a platformer. But yeah, it controls super, like super tight. Like Gex never felt unresponsive to me. You know what you know? it kind of reminds me of? Uh, it actually reminds me a bit of Rayman 1. Yeah, I could see that. You know, that game hasn't aged nearly as well as Gex has, in my opinion. No, Rayman 1 is a brutally hard game that is unashamed of how brutally hard it is. It, it's a rough one. It's a rough one. Like, I don't know. That, that'd be an interesting one to do in the future. But um, it is. But yeah, that, that's, a, me, that's, a, that's a weird one. Didn't they make that? Didn't they put down the Jaguar? It debuted on the Jaguar. That's weird as fuck. I own the Jaguar version. It is actually really impressive. Yeah, because the game is beautiful. Absolutely oh, gorgeous. Is. I think I have the GBA port of that. And yeah, that game still looks amazing. But it, but yeah, that's that's kind of a weirder one. I I could see the 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 Rayman and I see like it being similar to Rayman. But I think Gex is a more fulfilling experience of a platformer. Yeah, comparison. Gex has like, like Rayman got better later. Yeah. Ironically, both abandoned 2D to go to uh, 3D right away. <laughs> and I've well, and and I've never played either of these, either of those series 3D efforts. I've only ever done the 2D stuff. So, and with okay. Rayman, obviously, I've done Origins and Legends, and those two games are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Um, so I I want to bring it up because the ending to this game is the most hilarious fucking thing ever. Yeah, it's pretty. It's um, pretty wild. Gex literally defeats Rez. Spoilers for anyone who cares. <laughs> nah, he beats the final boss. Yeah. Is that, if, he, that is, if that's a spoiler. And then he literally gets shot back out of his, out of the TV dimension, lands back in his couch exactly where he was. And his response is just, okay, cool. I wonder what's on HBO. <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes right to credits. Uh, it would have been funnier if he said Cinemax. Cause I'd be like, oh, we know why he's going to Cinemax. He earned yeah. it. He earned it after that. I just, I love, I love Dana Gold's um, delivery of, okay, cool. Just like, he's so nonchalant. He does not like, give a shit. Like, I could see that rubbing some people the wrong way. You know, that like, he's not taking this seriously at all. But it, in a way, it's almost kind of his appeal. Oh, yeah. In a way that it's so, like, they just lean into the just totally laissez-faire sort of vibe. You know, like, that it, it, it becomes almost like parody. The ending is so unfulfilling that it works for this game because Gex is such an I mean what give a shit character. Yeah, because you're playing it and I wasn't even thinking about how's this gonna end, you know, like in a sense of like, oh, is the ending gonna be satisfying? I'm like, it probably won't be. I'll just be satisfied that I beat the game, you know? And it, it's 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 from that kind of era where like your satisfaction is you beat the game. I got honestly the laugh I got from the nonchalant. Okay, cool. At the end, literally made the entire experience worth it. I could see that. 
because when that happened to me, I'm like, you motherfucker. Like you, 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 you like, oh, this ain't nothing kind of thing. Like, come on, dude. I'm like, that's going to bite you in the ass. Uh, well, but, I don't know. In the third game, he gets on, gets it on with a pre rendered video woman. So, oh boy, that predating Sonic on that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so one other thing I, I have to bring up too is what did you think of the song at the end of the game? <laughs> <laughs> that song was kind of dope, actually. I kind of liked I, it. That was my so, favorite tune in the whole game. I wanted to use it as the credits for this episode, but I believe it has copyright in it, and I don't want to risk it. So yeah, yeah. Everybody listening, like, like just YouTube, like the get the Gex like credits music or whatever, and just listen to that tune. It is. It's pretty good, actually. I kind of like. I might put it on my phone. <laughs> it, it is the most '90s like cheese you'll ever hear. Like people I are just in it. the background going "Gex, Gex," <laughs> yeah. and it's like it's like a soccer chant. Yeah. Like 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 go to the go to the FC match and just start shouting "Gex." So one thing too, I, I think noticed Gex looks like he likes soccer, doesn't he? He looks like yeah, a soccer he, guy. Yeah, probably. I mean, yeah. he likes he likes nude Funker size, so. <laughs> You got well, yeah. Though if you like that, you have to like soccer. There's no other option. It's funny too because a lot of people are like they they always put Gex in that category of like edgy mascots from the nineties. Like there's nothing edgy about Gex. <laughs> like nothing edgy. They pre- they present him as edgy, but in reality, he he's about as edgy as like an internet shit poster. Pretty. I mean, that's basically if, what he is. If Gex was a modern platformer, he would totally be a shit poster. Yeah, like I guarantee you, this is like ninety five. He was probably on some forums, some internet oh, yeah. forums, spewing nonsense. Like, if, if you guys have ever looked at like archived nineties internet forum stuff, it is it is amazing. It was a very different time. <laughs> yes, and it's kind of awesome. It's not as unhinged as things can be now, though. You know, it it it's more. I hate to use this term. It's more real. There's something more <laughs> real about the way people presented themselves on the internet back then. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Um. So yeah, other than that though, there's not really much else to cover on Gex. Um. Other than it's, it was a surprisingly good game. Yeah. Like there's a reason why it is considered like one of the reasons it, it's, there's a reason why it is like considered the 3DO's like crowning achievement at times. It's one of the marquee titles for sure. So I guess before we get into it, we should probably talk about reception for this game at the time. Yeah, I'm curious. Um, what did people think about Gex back then? So reception-wise, um, the 3DO version got very what good reviews overall, like four out of five stars, eight point. EGM gave it a, a eight point six. Um, eight point six seven five. Yeah, Guys, come on, weird. just give it a nine. Come on. Next generation gave it a four to five stars. Uh, the the lowest rating ranked a three D O review is CD CD player. That's a that's a reviewing site for the oh, time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, they sure. gave they gave it six out of ten. A lot of the reviews I noticed that reviewed both the um the three D O and then later the PS one Saturn versions tended to be a lot harsher with the PS one Saturn versions for whatever reason. Is it just because it was a re-release, and usually with re-releases, critics tend to be a little bit harsher the second time around? Yeah, it was probably that, and it was probably it was a different reviewer who didn't have the same taste. It um, might have been, yeah, because because yeah, this originally came out on the 3DO in April '95, and then the PlayStation version was December '95, as was the Saturn version, and then it hit the P, and then it hit PCs in November of '96, mm-hmm. and funnily enough. Gex was published by Microsoft on the PC version. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, another interesting one too is Game Informer gave it a 9.25. <laughs> Reviewing the PS1 version, but that's still an interesting review. Like I, they liked I, it. I, like I don't get those like real deep decimal points. Like at that rate, yeah. just use like a percentage system. You know, like, oh, it's an 82%. Hmm. You know, like like 0.5s are okay. Like whenever I rate games, like I do a, a a ten point scale, but I won't go like eight two five. Like I have to commit to either it's an eight and eight or a half, eight and a half. I'm not gonna go in the middle. I have to commit. What's funny to me is um most reviewers like highly praised like the gameplay, the graphics, like the levels. 
um, Deanna Gold's performance, but a lot of them like criticize the comedy as being <laughs> not good. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's not enough to really weigh down the game, in my opinion. Well, especially in this game where it's very much just kind of a thing that happens it's window, it's background. window dressing, pretty much. Um, I know in the sequels, that's where he starts to get really zany with his like lines of dialogue, which yeah. I did find out the New Jersey joke came from this game, not Gexter. Oh, yeah, yeah, because I heard him say that. He's like, oh, so this is what New Jersey is or something. When he gets to Rez's lair, he's like, ah, this is what New Jersey look. No, he's like, ah, this is the fabled New Jersey. Yeah, or some shit like that. Yeah, he makes a New Jersey joke. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? Why are you being it's so not mean? A- it's not as funny as the one in Gex 2. The one in Gex 2 is still the best one. But uh, Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I have not played Gex 2 or Gex 3. Um, I'm I'm assuming we'll play them for the show eventually because I think this is probably the best avenue to talk about the other Gex yeah. sequels. But they're, they're tangentially related, and I feel like we should cover things like that uh, down the line. Um, now, the real question is, as we... Well, before we get to that, there's no memory manager, so... FC yeah. one players, sorry. Um, did, did you know? I, I I was just looking. Like the game uh, Whiplash that Crystal Dynamics made for the PS2. Apparently, that was supposed to be a Gex four. That was the original idea. Yeah, I believe a lot of members of the Gex team at the time started worked on that game. Yeah, but then they decided to not make it Gex and do something else, which to me is like doesn't make any sense. Like just do Gex four. Yeah. Uh... I guess they didn't want to have to go. They probably didn't want to have to pay Dana gold and they probably didn't want to uh, have to write all the lines of dialogue. Yeah, I guess. And then I totally forgot about this. And it was like two years ago, somebody unearthed a old prototype for a game called Gex Jr. (laughs) Gex Jr. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to send you the video? Yeah, you can send me that. I'll check it out later. Yeah, It's like a little 30 second clip. So it was supposed to be for the PS1 in like 2001, I think. Yeah, interesting. I, I'm assuming a lot of this stuff was before Crystal got their hands on the Legacy of Cain uh, franchise, and then they kind of did that just became their thing. It might have been around the same time, I think, because the the Gex Junior, according to this, it was uh it was going to be in 2001, and they were already oh. doing Legacy of Cain by then. So. Oh yeah, so, huh. yeah, yeah. So maybe they were just thinking like, oh, well, Gex was still like a, uh, it was kind of a big deal for us. We should try to keep it going. Uh, One other thing before we get to our ranking, um, I was, I noticed this when I was watching the credits, apparently Silco Knights assisted with development of Gex. Yeah, that was interesting. (laughs) I was like, oh. Yeah, and and also um, Beam, Beam Software ported this game to PlayStation and Sega Saturn. And then yes. uh, Kinsoft did the PC version. So Crystal only worked on the 3DO version. Officially. Yeah, I, I think that's why 3DO version is considered the best version by most people still to this yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and it became the pack-in later on, which is a much better pack-in than Crash and Burn <laughs> by yeah. a mile, which might explain why this specific jewel case version I have is so easy to find. Yeah, because finding the because full I'm box, pretty... not easy. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure Gex is the best-selling 3DO game. I believe it is. Um, yes, because the 3DO sold, what, over 2 million, roughly? Yes. And then, according to this, the best-selling game is Gex selling over 1 million. So about a 50% attach rate for the system, which makes sense, especially yeah. if it became bundled with the console through most of its life. Because my guess is when they got to this... They were like, oh, this is, oh, throw this in the pack. Fuck, fuck that Crash and Burn game. Get it out yeah. of here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, now I guess like we do every episode, must play, okay, stay away. I- I'm going to just go right from there. It's a must play. I'm going to say must play somewhere else. Because for me, I just, I thought the, I didn't get too deep into it, but the the performance of this game on 3DO hardware, it could have just been the FC10 model, I don't know, but I just had so much slowdown. Like, to the point, I thought the game was just kind of naturally slower, but then at one point, I was like, oh, I kind of need a walkthrough for a little thing, and then I saw a walkthrough of the PS1 version, and the game is running super fucking fast and, like, perfectly, yeah. and I'm like, holy shit, and then... When I went back to the 3DO version, I'm like, oh, God, this game is so slow. It is chugging, like, really hard. And the game would, like, 
freeze for like a split second when I would go between like levels. And every time it happened, I was like, oh shit, the game didn't crash on me, did it? Like the like the heart, like the performance of this game is not good. It's very bad. It's an unfortunate example that the 3DO really wasn't that powerful of a system. Yeah, which is a shame because this is probably like one of the best games the console has and probably one of the most notable games the console has. I and also then, think it doesn't too, feel it's optimized very well for the hardware. It, it's definitely not optimized well. That's probably my one downside to Gex is the 3DO wasn't the most groundbreaking 32-bit console there was. It was probably the most basic of all the 32-bit systems in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. The thing is, though, a good developer could get around that. Like we saw with Need for Speed, that Need for Speed shouldn't be as good as it is, but it is. Yeah, like EA were wizards on this thing. But I think maybe some of the hardware issues comes down to Crystal Dynamics was still a new studio. Yeah, so that's probably still figuring it out. And vet- and you also got to think, too, Beam Software published, uh, ported it over to PS1 and Saturn. Beam Software were veterans by this point. So they probably oh, yeah. Knew. Beam Beam knew what they were doing. Yeah. So it's pro- so, it's un- an unfortunate case of just the time, the system and the timing probably wasn't the best, but it doesn't hurt the overall game. I, I will say, despite the slowdown, it never got in the way. Like, it was never a reason I died or anything like that. So I can give it that. Um, and, and I know that on RetroArch, there's that uh, Opera 3DO core. And in there, you have options of uh, overclocking the CPU to, like, twice what the original 3DO had. And I don't know if that helps. I have no idea. So maybe maybe I should try that. Like, throw this uh though this rom in the opera emulator with a uh, twice the cpu speed and maybe it kind of helps the game run faster so yeah. which would be a good thing for sure um but even outside of that i would still say the game is yeah the game's a must play it's definitely worth playing it's one of the best games we've played on the show by a long shot oh yeah um but i would say if the playstation one version is easier to find and play just play that one this so let little Putting aside the fact that you have to get a 3DO itself, which is already a, kind of an ask, this is an extre- incredibly common game to find. Like It is not yeah. that hard at all. It's on PSN still, I believe, so if you really want to play Gex, it's there for download. Yeah, and um, I think the the jewel case for the 3DO version I got, I don't think I paid more than 30 bucks for it. It's only expensive if you go for the the long box version that uh, that Bill has over there. Like yeah. that's the pricey one, but if you just want the jewel case, you'll pay like thirty-ish bucks for it, and that's not and and that's not a bad price at all. Yeah, and it's a fun it's a fun game overall that like honestly doesn't deserve the hate that it's gotten over the last couple of the last decade or so. I think some of the hate's starting to subside. Like it doesn't feel people... as bad as it used to be because I think now through emulation getting so much better, people have actually played the game. And have gone like, oh, it's actually not that bad. You know, I wasn't sure what to expect with this guy at all. I had, I had no idea. And I was pleasantly surprised. And I'm glad I was surprised. And I'm like, oh, I like this. Like, this was a good game. I could totally see myself playing this game again in the future. You know, maybe just emulating the PlayStation 1 or Saturn version to see if it, how different it is. Uh, maybe downloading it on GOG. I believe it's still on GOG, actually. Published by Square Enix on GOG. <laughs> Yep. So if you want to see the Square Enix logo in front of this fucker, there you go. Go to GOG. Just picturing Maybe that's Gex. controller support. <laughs> I'm just picturing Gex with like cloud strife hair now. <laughs> why isn't why isn't Gex in Kingdom Hearts? God damn it. I know. Missed opportunity. Absolutely. That would be such a random appearance. Oh, and right now Gex is on sale on GOG for a buck fifty. A buck fifty on GOG. That's a steal. And a dollar yeah. fifty, absolutely worth playing. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Other than that, though, definite must play. I'm still not sure if I'd consider it the best 3DO game. I'm gonna wait till we get to episode fifty because I believe we agreed we're gonna rank all of the games we played. Can I think we can safely say this is top five? Oh yeah. By Easy far. top five, maybe top three. Yeah. Like me, I would put it like probably my 
probably my five favorite games we've played have been this Road Rash, um, Incredible Machine, Return Fire, and Need for Speed, maybe. Probably Need for Speed or Icebreaker. Ice, maybe. Oh yeah, Icebreaker. That's another. somewhere in there. Yeah. Like Gex is definitely up there as one of the better games in the series. So yeah. it's one of the better games on the system. And yeah, eventually I'd say we could probably do single episodes on Gex 2 and Gex 3. That would be cool. Yeah, because um, like, eventually we've already kind of established eventually we're going to run out of 3DO games for the console that we can physically talk about. And then yeah. we're going to start branching off to like 3DO's post console career because they had a surprisingly big career after that. Oh, for sure. For sure. And um, and yeah, and and they're doing that Gex trilogy of like limited run is doing that eventually. So it would make sense to um to talk about that as well. But oh yeah, but we have no idea whenever that's coming out. So you know, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll probably I'll probably buy it when it comes out anyways. Yeah. And it'll be cool to play Gex on modern systems. So. Yeah, get all those achievements. But uh yeah, I think we we have established that episode fifty, we're gonna do a ranking episode of the games we've played. Oh yeah, that that'll be a fun game to do because I've actually been going back and listening to some of our older episodes just to kind of see where I'm sitting on some of those games. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to shift around because I feel like we were harsher to certain games earlier on, and or or, or maybe lenient with certain ones. So because I think we were trying to find the good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> which was kind of harder because we didn't want to just do all of the good stuff out the gate you know what i mean yeah i mean we found some hidden gems though in the in the process oh yeah and we still have more to go like there there's still quite a few games that i want to do uh, oh yeah that i'm like really excited to actually like play and talk about so i got one in the mail today that we're going to be talking about eventually i'll save that for uh later yeah I well have... I, I got one in the mail yesterday and then i have a couple more coming as well that'll be good ones to talk about and nice. then one, and then one, I took a bit of a risk on. It's going to be a while till it gets here because I I took a risk on it, but I'll let you know when I get it. Okay. Um. But yeah, speaking of the older episodes of the show, we're actually uh, we can announce this now. Uh, next week we're going to be talking about Way of the Warrior, and we're actually going to have um Casey from uh, episode three of the show. He's coming back, and he's going to join us for that one. Yeah, that'll that'll be fun. That'll be fun. I haven't met him. So I don't know anything, but, uh, but yeah, that'll be, that'll be cool. He said that we have a very good repertoire and he's enjoying the shit, the episodes. So that's a good that's sign. Good. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, where the warriors get, that's going to be an interesting one. I'm, I'm ready to listen to some white zombie. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you want to do it just so you can talk about naughty dog. Naughty dog. Then also I, I love really shitty mortal Kombat clones. So yeah, because I, I how about I'll say this before. We do Way of the Warrior, just off the top of your head right now. Which is the better game, this or Kasumi Ninja? Uh, Way of the Warrior, just because it it functions. <laughs> That's really about it. Okay. Then how just... about, how about we'll both play Way of the Warrior, and then for funsies, let's play Kasumi Ninja, just to see which one's better. Okay. Um, Kasu yeah, Kasumi Ninja is... I do own that, so I can... I can boot it up at any time. I've um, held that. I've held the box for that game in my hand once. Yeah, uh, it has. It, so I, I will say, Kasumi Ninja does have a, a Scotsman that shoots fireballs out of his dick, um, which you think would make it the better game. Just on that, you, you'd think, but the game plays like garbage. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, though, um, uh, before we do the closings, do you want to shout out the uh, stream tomorrow night? Or Yes, sir. So I've, I'm now streaming on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Thrak94. Every Wednesday night at 7 p.m., you can watch me play a handful of Sega Genesis games, and we are ranking them as well. So I take requests. I have quite a few requests uh, from Bill and some from from other people in the sh um, who watch the streams, as well as my own picks. So I'll try to sprinkle them in. And I'm considering maybe every once in a while doing like a side stream where I play, say, one of the longer like RPGs or adventure games, like for like by itself for like, say, two hours before I 
really talk about it. Cause I've been I've been itching to play a little beyond Oasis. Because that's a really cool game. But I feel if I do that, I might do it kind of like it's like a like a like a extra stream, you know what yeah. I mean? Kind of thing. So um but, but we'll see. Yeah. So that's that'll actually be a I shouldn't say tomorrow night because th- when this episode comes out, it'll be the night of the episode. But, it'll um, be tonight. Yes. yes. Tune in tonight, you folks. Uh, one other little piece of housekeeping I just want to shout out. Um, not related to 3DO, but uh, just uh, podcasting in general. Um, going forward, uh, our sister show, Geek Addicts, now has its own dedicated uh, feed for podcasts. So it's no longer in the GNC feed directly. Um, so yeah, that's um, now going forward going to be its own thing, separate from everything. I remember when you first, like, did that some people were like oh shit what happened to geek ass <laughs> is it going away yeah i didn't think about it when i posted that i was like yeah that, does, that sounds kind of like going away but no we're not we're just uh now it's easier to find us because we're not buried in with uh gaming collecting anymore it's its own yeah. s- stream well that's uh, good feed. that's good also as it, des- um, as it deserves yeah and it's just more convenient now i've got all three podcasts under one account now so editing and managing is so much easier um this man is a freak everyone yeah i know <laughs> i know but uh yeah once again guys thanks for joining us on the 3do experience uh, you can find the 3do experience on all your major podcasting platforms um uh you can also find the episodes on youtube along with a video version hi guys um and yeah if you can like you can find all of our links at linktree slash the barber who games and you can also join the gnc podcast network discord server to talk all things gaming collecting 3d experience geek addicts get talk gaming anime or just general nonsense that's pretty much what goes on over there and with that everybody we will see you all later Bye bye if you're not playing on a 3do system What are you playing with?